Coming up on this edition of News You Can Use. School has already started in the Happer Horsham School District, but our teachers have been preparing for the school year all summer long. This program takes a look at some of the workshops offered to our teachers as they look for better ways to instruct our students. News You Can Use is coming up next. During a big unit, I'll do maybe two quizzes, maybe halfway and three quarters of a way, and then I'll do a test at the end, like a, just a regular test. In this How We Teach workshop, high school principal Dennis Williams asked a group of teachers representing different fields of study to come up with teaching strategies to implement in their curriculums for this year. The group that was in there, we're going to be working together this year as a wing, is what uh, Dennis called it. So we came up with three strategies that we could use in the classroom to um, consistently check for student understanding. And it was nice to hear from different departments like foreign language, phys ed, um, and the different strategies that, that they tend to use. We, we considered and talked about a lot of strategies. There probably were two dozen suggested. We were given time to talk about strategies that we use currently, um, strategies that we like the sounds of. And um, we started in small groups talking about that group of three or four people. And then we identified in that small group what we use, what we liked. And then every group shared their thoughts on all and their discussions. And from that, we were able to identify three strategies that the whole group said, you know what, we're all going to try this this semester. This group has agreed that the three areas that they'll commit to as a winner is caseload, entrance exit ticket, time pair share, and student response. The entrance and exit ticket, which are things that have been around for a long time, but as a wing, we decided that we're all going to give that a give that a shot. Where you know students come into the class and you know we find out, you know we ask them a question and they answer the question on a, you know a little index card or something like that. And at the end of the class, you know we also ask them some sort of question on an index card, and you know we, we get a you can really gauge and get an idea where most of your students are at if they understand the concepts, et cetera. Um, another strategy that we were going to try and implement this year was the use of the, um, the electronic response system, or as we call it, the student response system. Not everyone has ac access to the, as a lot of teachers call them, clickers, which are these um, yeah, basically these little remote controls that students hold, where they, you know, the teacher will ask questions, the students respond by clicking either A, B, C, or D, one, two, three, or four, etc. So it's a great way to, to gauge the level of understanding with your students and to um, have a, uh, provide for an interactive environment. Getting the proper feedback from students about what they've learned in class gives the teacher a measuring tool on how they are connecting content with their students. Teaching is now an interactive craft where students and teachers engage in the learning process. Yeah. Ninth grade students entering Happer Horsham High School will experience something new this year called the Ninth Grade Academy. Ninth grade principal Ralph Rapino will run the academy and explains its purpose. Ninth grade academy is obviously new to Happer Horsham. Um, what we're looking to do is trying to be proactive in uh, creating a solid uh, foundation for our ninth graders and our new students here at the high school. Um, we're looking to basically uh, not change too many things curricularly, but um, perhaps get into a better mindset as far as uh, behavioral norms, attendance, um, and have different goals with regard to um, where we, we see our ninth graders uh, progressing. One noticeable change is keeping freshmen in one section of the building. The H-Wing now houses the Freshman Academy. 
The purpose for this change is to relieve anxiety for students looking for their next class. The time to travel from class to class will now be easier for freshmen new to a large school setting. Another benefit to this academy setting is to have all the ninth grade teachers in one spot so they can track students easier. I think what we've been doing in the past as far as um, taking data and, and, and being able to pull data out of our, our system to, to track some of our students that are having trouble in their classes, um, it's priceless. We can get to them and, and perhaps even help them more being in an academy setting because um, their teachers are, are next door to each other, they're not across the building. So we can identify some students that are having some struggles and, and perhaps remediate those struggles right away. A team of teachers in English, math, science, and social studies will focus on unique needs of freshmen. That's you. We'll also deal with rigor, relevance, and relationships, which we're going to redefine right now. Because I will tell you the most important thing to our students that will be coming in this time next week are relationships. It has nothing to do with the rigor or relevance. Nothing. If you don't, and if we don't connect or find a way to connect with these children, they may be disconnected from school. The week before school began, ninth grade teachers participated in exercises that focused specifically on teaching ninth grade students. These workshops were designed to help teachers connect with ninth graders. Some of them have not solely taught ninth graders or have not taught ninth graders per se in a while. So I wanted to give them some background about what exactly their challenges may be as, as they get started in the academy. Um, again, we're looking to be proactive, as proactive as we can, and give our um, staff members a, a, an opportunity to just share some things that they, they believe um, and, and see on a daily basis. These exercises are designed to help the teacher connect with a 14 or 15 year old. But the ultimate goal of the academy is to prepare them for the next step in their lives after they leave the ninth grade. The ultimate goal truly is to have a well-rounded 10th grader, uh, somebody who's going to finish their ninth grade uh, year and have multiple experiences, successful experiences in academically um, and socially. Um, it's an important part of who they will be. It's a good it's a good opportunity for them to get off to a very good start. First we have this program where I can guarantee you one thing. Your students will practice basic mathematical computational skills that they never have before. That I can promise you. I'm Craig Dobson. I'm the First Day Math Ambassador for First Day Math. It's a math program that's online and allows children to practice math 24 hours a day, wherever they are. It also allows the parents to participate along with the students and it's very teacher friendly. It supports all math curriculums and has been proven to increase math scores for students nationwide. So we're hoping that it's gonna be a very successful implementation in Hatboro Horsham for this school year. And we're looking forward to working with you to get this program up and running. Game one, game two, and game three. Game one is ad only. It's all you can do. You click start and your target number is six. Which one of these wheels can I make into a six only using addition, left or right? So I can say five plus one, building the equation, enter. Hey, I got my first smiley face, look at that. Now, now the target number is a five. Which one of these wheels can I make into a five using only addition? Okay, notice that the student already is beginning to think along multiple tracks, okay? Getting the two options there, as well as building the equation, enter. Hey, I got my first sticker. Now this program will keep a count of every sticker or point that I earn forever, okay? And I work in this program, okay? I'm going to do start again because I want to show you something. Students will learn this very rapidly. You can do this if you want to speed yourself up because you're working as a clock. You notice that. You do seven, zero, plus, enter. You can insert our own just by going to insert and typing in the website. I want to put in a Word document that I know I'm going to use during class. Insert. Today we had the pleasure of having Martin Ford present a training on the student response systems. This school year HHEF granted the elementary schools with two response systems per school 
and teachers will be using these response systems to gather assessment data on students and increase student right. engagement throughout instructional and lessons. I have, okay, a break for a I have you come up, choose something up there. They come up, how's math being used? You call on the person, deflect everything. I never let a kid say, I can't stand Marty it. showed um, online resources tools from the smart notebook and demonstrations of how to use a smart response technology. I have a little video on there. But all these things are set up with a question. The smart response clicker technology works in conjunction with uh, smart boards, which we now have in the elementary school classrooms. Teachers will be able to do instant polls with students, to gather data anonymously, to inform instruction. When you start an assessment, it's going to say, join Mr. such and such's great join his class member it said join Mr. Ford it only reads up to eight characters so another use of the smart response clicker technology is for teachers to be able to do quizzes um, or tests through the technology and give instant feedback um, to students right on the smart board so for instance a question could be asked um, related to a specific piece of content and then the students can see what, how many students in the class answer correctly and the teacher can then follow up with um, showing why certain answers are incorrect. It's that feedback piece, that feedback loop that has the most power um, with instruction. If I'm a student and I give you that you're, uh, you have children who are on Facebook and they're your friends because you want to be your kids' friends, and then they have friends. So now you're a friend of your child, and your child has friends, and those friends end up uh, people who are in the school that you teach in. So that means that you're seeing posts from the... Social networking is used most recently in the hurricane and the earthquake in the last week in Pennsylvania. We have used the uh, technology to get information to everybody about emergencies and how we can respond during an emergency. Lucky dagger thing. You can overhear a conversation in the oh, hallway. That's right. And what do you do with it? Well that's 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 the whole that's right. the question is what do you that's do with correct. it? That's correct. Right. It doesn't and matter what, I'm trying, what format it's but, coming in. But what I'm trying to do is get you to the point that you understand that yes there is interaction over social networking. That email is really? social networking. That honest if you bump into somebody at the mall, that's social networking. I'm at Hatboro Horsham to give instruction on social networking for educators. The problem with social networking today and how we use social networking and how it can be used in school districts. <laughs> the point is that social networking is being used by people to such an extent in bad times that we are not as educators going to be able to say no, never because in a very short period of time, when I talk to police about this, I tell them this is 1922. We have automobiles, and it's really neat because they don't get, we don't have to tie them up to the hitch anymore. We jump in them, we ride, we go fast, we don't have to give them any rest. This is really wonderful. But if you think this is something, wait until the 1950s or the 1960s when you see the muscle cars come out. If this kind of social networking is shocking you, wait. It's going to get even worse if that's uh, what you think. What you have to understand with social networking is that there are the good sides of it as well as the bad sides. Don't think that you can friend everybody on Facebook and still keep your information private. One of the things I'd like to put out there, why this is important, for you guys to sit in this um, workshop is that you are the new community mental health. Teachers and school personnel are the new community mental health. You're seeing per capita <coughs> more mental health issues than your predecessors. You're having to deal. You know, schools are the new mental, new community mental health. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the school is the only thing left in the community that sees the child in um, a pretty consistent context. 
Uh, we don't have the community net networking systems that we usually do. There are a lot of two-parent homes. Um, there are a lot of single-parent homes. Uh, parents work a whole lot more. So if, a, if there's going to be an intervention in a child's life, it's going to be in school. Because of, because of behavior they have in the school or lack of behavior they have in the school. It's, it's going to be fall to the, to the schools to interact with the, the parents in that context. Um, <clears throat> students are presenting to you with psychopathology when they used to hide it. Um, not 10 years ago, um, kids didn't talk about having depression. They didn't talk about being bipolar. They didn't talk about ADHD. Um, they kind of hit it, it was in the background, you may know of, of the issues because their parents would tell you. Now, they announce themselves. Hi, my name is Joyce and I'm a bipolar. You got a problem with that? That's pretty much how kids will approach you now. Well, I think a lot of standard drug and alcohol kind of workshops always focus on, you know, this is the drug, this is, this is what it does, this is what to look for. And I think what people don't uh, talk about is the conversation, you know, what do I think about drugs and alcohol? How does it influence me in my life? And, and then how does that um, influence how I deal with the kids? Um, I hope the ki that uh, the teachers take away a new um, way of looking at the subject in general. And I hope it leads to conversations among themselves and with administration about how the school deals with drug and alcohol issues and mental health issues and um, how the teachers deal with the issues and, and what their commitment is. You are required to teach, to intervene through psychopathology more than ever. You're geared towards that. You're sensitive to certain issues <clears throat> because of 504 plans, because of um, a lot of the kids who have IEPs. So. <clears throat> The teachers today, as opposed to just 10 years ago, are a very different animal. And you are required to do a whole lot of things that you were never trained for. Here in Hatboro Horsham, you have a wonderful SAP program, student assistance program. Uh, your personnel are highly trained and very effective. And they need to use, uh, use them. Uh, they need, as I, as I talked about in the, in the workshop, uh, they can use them for referrals, direct referrals. They can use them for support. Um, they can document uh, behavior that they're seeing in children and either hand it to the, the SAP uh, personnel or at least let the SAP personnel what's, know what's going on. You also have a very efficient um, and highly skilled uh, school psychologist, which a lot of schools don't, and uh, she is a really great resource. There is not as many community resources as there used to be, and there just isn't the networking. We've got two-parent homes. Um, to parent styles. Um, there is not the follow through on a community basis as there used to be. Um, you're kind of it as far as a lot of the services. I hope they take out that the brain development research they're having on adolescent brain is so amazing and new and tells us about um, how an adolescent thinks and what they are capable of, not capable of. And I hope they take away subjects for conversations that they have with each other and with the administration. Mr. Rapino, I am a, I am a house principal. Um, I welcome you to Happen Horsham High School, uh, the class of 2015. We are excited for you and with you. Believe me when I tell you. It's going to be a journey these next 719 days. Yes, there's 719 school days in your career.
and I'm the president of the Blair Mill HSA. And today we're hosting a parent event, the Parent Survival Tent. Unfortunately, we're not outside due to rain, but we've invited our parents to come in and mingle and talk to each other about the first day and all their fears and cheers about sending their kids off to school. And we have a couple of little survival kits for the parents, a little bag with some tips and, and treats in there. Mother Nature is not raining on this parade. That's the right. children are excited, they look happy and enthusiastic, and we're off to a great start. 